while staying with that music theme, thousands of the world's most popular rock and pop artists are being assembled under one roof for the very last time. They won't actually be there in person, but their recordings will. Yes, a sale of rare vinyl singles and albums takes place early next month, so we sent Andy Bevan to rummage through the record boxes in the hope of finding a hidden gem. Name that tune. Actually, it's called Hit and Miss by the John Barry 7 Plus 4. It may be lurking in here somewhere. It may not. But thousands of other hits and a few misses certainly are. And soon they'll all be going, going, gone for a pound apiece. Reddington's Rare Records was a Birmingham landmark for more than 50 years. A one-stop shop for vinyl lovers everywhere. The business moved premises once or twice, but the boss remained the same. Dan Reddington shut up shop in 2006, but continued to supply his sought-after 33s and 45s online. Now, though, at the age of 73, he's decided it's time for a final clear-out. So everything, yes, everything, at his Redditch warehouse must go. I'd love to do it if I was younger, because it's in the blood, music's in my blood. I mean, since I bought my first record in 1955, Sammy Davis, Because of You, um, you know, I've always loved music. I've always got music on. God help the neighbours. They haven't been knocking on the door yet, but uh, I still blast away, yeah. The first ever vinyl LP was released on June the 21st, 1948. <laughs> Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto in E minor. But it's not the most valuable. That title belongs to a cover version of a Buddy Holly hit. Well, that'll be the day when you say goodbye, yeah. This original 1958 pressing by the Quarry Men was sold in 1981 to Sir Paul McCartney for a reported £200,000. Why was he so interested? Well, probably because the Quarry Men eventually became the Beatles. So you won't find that gem anywhere amongst these boxes, but there are plenty of other rarities from rock and pop legends. There's an Elvis 10-inch behind me there, uh, loving you, it's a 10-inch, we used to get £100 for that in the old days. Um, you know, for a pound, <laughs> it's brilliant. Loving you. These days even the CD is on the way out, with more and more music being bought online, able to be played and copied to multiple devices in an instant. A long way from the painstaking days of the vinyl pressing plant. The record press automatically heats the vinyl plastic for stamping, then automatically cools it, so the record can be played immediately. Dan reckons he has 25,000 albums and 50,000 singles. All of them are for sale, and it doesn't matter whether you want Bruce Springsteen or Shirley Bassey. Each one is a pound. Vinyl enthusiasts insist the sound is warmer and the touchy-feely experience of a single or LP can't be beaten even if one slip of the stylus can seriously alter that enjoyment forever, that enjoyment forever, that enjoyment forever. When you picked up a, a, a vinyl LP and you took it out its sleeve and you're looking at the sleeve and the, the notes and things like that, and you put it on your turntable and you, you pick your arm up and you put it on the disc, it's kind of romantic, isn't it? I, I mean, I, it, all, it always is to me. The sale at Reddington's begins at 10am on Saturday, September the 6th, so get there early, because, in the words of one late great vinyl vocalist, once it's over... It's over! Andy Bevan, ITV News. Uh, so that's what a record is that you've been going on about. I'm oh, too young to remember sake, you, see. it's a cheap shot. <laughs> Let's move straight on to uh, sport and football league clubs. Uh, for them, the season may well be underway, but for the big boys, it all starts this weekend. Yes, for Stoke, Aston Villa and West Brom, it's another season of Premier League football. But for Leicester, it's the first time in the top flight for more than a decade. Well, their campaign starts at home tomorrow and Michael Sibbert is outside the King Power Stadium for us this evening. Uh, it's been a long time in the coming for fans, this, Michael. Yes, this stadium behind me has never seen Premier League football while it's been known as the King Power Stadium. But as you say, it's more than 10 years since top flight football was in Leicester at all. Everton are tomorrow's visitors here and Nigel Pearson will be hoping that his side can get off to a good start in front of a full house. Leicester City are back in the top flight for the first time in more than a decade. It's been a long wait, but now they have a chance to show what they can do in the Premier League. I'm not going to underplay how 
how difficult it is to make that leap from from the Championship in, into the Premier League. But uh, I certainly don't intend to not enjoy the experience. But we'll only enjoy the experience by being competitive. New signings Matthew Upson and Mark Albrighton will bring some much needed Premier League experience to the King Power Stadium and the rumoured arrival of Esteban Cambiasso, the Champions League winner from Inter Milan, is a real statement of intent. But this season will be all about how last year's core of players perform in the Premier League. The likes of Kasper Schmeichel in goal, Wes Morgan at the back, Danny Drinkwater in midfield and David Nugent up front. Their form will go a long way towards deciding how this season pans out. Well, it's my first time that Leicester City have been in the Premier League when, when I've been born. Best thing is, I think it brings the city together. It brings back all memories and it's just an amazing feeling. Steve Walsh knows the pressure of playing for Leicester in the top flight. It's the ultimate in, in football because I do believe it's the best uh, league in the world. The pressure is high um, and that's what you know, players will love. They'll, they just, I bet they just can't wait to get, you know, to get out onto that pitch now. It's bound to be a roller coaster of a season. 38 games to prove that Leicester City can compete with the best in the world. So there is real excitement around the city at the moment and around the ground, but it could be a tough start for Leicester. Take a look at their first few fixtures here. They start here obviously tomorrow against Everton, but after that they play Chelsea, Arsenal, Stoke away, which is always a tough fixture, and Manchester United. So there may have to be some patience from the fans here in terms of getting points on the board. The fans today have, though, had a chance to get their photo taken with the Premier League trophy. Now, the odds at the moment of captain here, Wes Morgan, going home with the trophy at the end of the season is 5,000 to 1. So no one here has taken any chances. They've had their photos with the trophy before the season starts. And if you want to join the queues here for those photos, it's in the club shop just behind me and they're open till 8 o'clock. Now, for the other teams uh, in the Premier League from our region, it's just as important to get off to a good start this season. Our sports correspondent, Steve Clamp, has been assessing their chances. Stoke City, the Midlands' top Premier League side. 2014 was the first time in their history they could lay claim to that, and it was largely thanks to new manager Mark Hughes. He'll be aiming for a second successive top 10 finish. The first test comes at home to Aston Villa. They are traditionally seen as the Midlands' biggest side, but last year was a struggle and Paul Lambert's team will now be underdogs at Stoke. It'll be a great atmosphere there. And, um, I think we'll take a terrific falling up there. The Stoke fans will be behind, behind their side, so but we can certainly go up there and, and cause problems, that's for sure. When Stoke were promoted to the Premier League back in 2008, Bojan was a 17-year-old already in the first team at Barcelona. Now he's signed for Mark Hughes' side for £3 million. Meanwhile, Villa have brought in a new assistant manager in the shape of Roy Keane, plus players Joe Cole and Philip Senderos will add experience. But keeping hold of captain Ron Vlaar, who's attracting big interest from Southampton, could be key. But I think his main concern was getting back from the World Cup and getting, getting fit and hopefully being ready for, for Saturday. And That's when he's, when he's been. I've got a good rapport with Ron, so I don't have any, any problem with that whatsoever. For West Bromwich Albion, last season was one to forget. Just seven wins during the campaign and with Steve Clark's sacking, the Nicholas Anelka Canal saga and Pepe Mel's brief reign, it all added up to a bit of a shambles. New head coach Alan Irvine has had money to spend though, a club record signing in the shape of Brown Ide, who cost more than £10 million. There'll be pressure on the Nigerian to produce the goods. He's, he's not been here for long, he, uh, in fact, less than a week. So, you know, it's, it's a big ask if we do decide to put him in, but we've been really pleased with the, the level of his fitness and sharpness. Three gaffers of three clubs, all now waiting for three o'clock. So as Steve says, three o'clock, it all kicks off for all four of our Premier League sides tomorrow. Doesn't seem five minutes since the World Cup finish, does it? But now the Premier League is back. OK, Michael, thank you very much. If you just go and keep our place in the queue for the picture with the trophy, <laughs> Lucy, she'll be there as soon as she can. Yeah, Brilliant. I can't wait. Cheers, Michael. That. Thank you. <laughs> Gosh, the football season comes around very quickly, doesn't it? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's well, a great thing. <laughs> it almost feels like the end of summer, doesn't oh, yeah. it? It's the, almost That's the end the of the cricket end. season, even more depressingly. Oh, gosh, here we go. Should we talk about that some more? No, well, let's, let's talk. talk about the weather, shall we? Because right. I think it does look like a fairly unsettled weekend. Janelle Aldridge has all the details for you tonight.
Hello, well it's been a very wet day today and it was a bit of a wet day yesterday too in fact. This photo is coming from Wayne Whitehouse in Colesville on a landfill that was just before the heavens opened yesterday and they certainly have today and they will do again on Sunday but it looks like Saturday will be a dry day this weekend but you can see those weather fronts that are pushing their way towards us and we also have a cool northeasterly wind in play and that's keeping temperatures lower than where they should be for this time of the year. Overnight tonight we're expecting all those showers we saw today to clear the odd one could linger on, but it should be a dry night, broken cloud, lows of around 10 Celsius. So it's going to feel cool tonight as well. But that broken cloud means a sunny spell to start the day tomorrow. But that sunshine will become increasingly hazy as we go through the day and cloud begins to build associated with those weather systems. So we're looking at highs of 19 Celsius by the middle of the afternoon. So that means where there is sunny breaks in the cloud it is going to feel fairly decent but it's also going to be a breezy day tomorrow and that could make things feel slightly cooler. As we go into Saturday night into Sunday we're expecting showers to push their way back in and we could see some heavy ones overnight on Saturday and they stay with us from Sunday right through to Monday and to Tuesday. As I mentioned temperatures should be around 21, 22 this time of the year. They're around high teens and that's because of that cool northeasterly wind but tonight it should be a dry night with broken cloud. The Pollen Count, sponsored by Checkertrade.com. Checkertrade, Checkertrade.com. And all the unsettled and wetter weather means the pollen count is low over the next few days. But whether our breaks in the cloud and some sunshine, the pollen count will rise to moderate. <laughs> And just to update you on our top story this evening, the outbreak of salmonella poisoning in the West Midlands. Yes, Mark Goff has joined us back in the studio. Mark, what is uh, the latest you have for us? Uh, well, we've now been told that actually three people who had salmonella have now died. They didn't necessarily die from the bug, but they certainly had the bug when they died. That's according to Public Health England. Uh, and we just had a statement from Heartland Hospital. They said one of the deaths is subject to a coroner's inquest. Therefore, we're unable to comment at this stage. But what they've done is they've tested uh, both the food and the water in Heartlands, and they've ruled those out as a cause of the infection. They're now working with the Health Protection Agency to look at the other two cases, and they believe they say community acquired. That means they didn't get it in the hospital; they caught it outside in the community. Um, so yes, yeah, so tonight three people have have died who had salmonella. Okay, well, thanks for the update, Mark, and we'll keep you updated on our website to itv.com slash central. Do you have a lovely weekend, whatever you're up to? Yes, that is all we have time for tonight. So until uh, next week and bulletins across the weekend, of course, uh, goodbye from us. Goodbye. Bye-bye.